Greetings, family. This is Brother Prodigy, a.k.a. William, and I'm back with another installment, okay? I apologize for it taking so long, but I just wanted to really sit back and analyze everything that's been going on and study everything that's been going on lately. Once again, if you have not gotten it, go out and get the book, my book, Gnosis of a God. That's G-N-O-S-I-S of a God, G-O-D. Okay, go out and get the book. The book is available right now on Amazon.com, as well as you can order it from Borders Books, Books a Million, ETC. But go out, get the book. Support this Gnosis, support a true Gnostic that, you know, uh, that has been constantly holding it down. Okay? Go out and support it. Now, this installment that I'm going to bring to you all, and this is an installment for all my subscribers. I talk about this in my book as well. This installment is titled Life in a Virtual Reality. Okay, this installment is titled Life in a Virtual Reality. With virtual reality being defined as essentially a realistic simulation of an environment, including three-dimensional graphics by a computer system using interactive software and hardware. Okay, simple enough. Now, this might sound crazy for some, but for those that wish to know the truth about the world in which they live in, this most definitely will be an eye opener. OK, this most definitely will be a third eye opener. Now, after being in the Matrix for 30 plus years now, I've come to the conclusion that life as we know it must be revealed for what it really is. OK, as a Gnostic and an old soul, it's my obligation to really and essentially inform the elect about the world in which they live. Now, I comprehend that many will not understand. As one of the reasons why they will not understand is probably because it's not yet their time okay but when the time is right those ready to graduate will seek this information which is the gnosis that guides okay now once again let me just preface this by saying i am a gnostic and a lot of this information will go over the heads of many but to those that have eyes to see let them see or to those that have an eye let them see. Now, let me really start off by first describing consciousness, okay? Consciousness, as defined, is simply just having a special awareness or sensitivity, okay? Having an alertness to or a concern for a particular issue or situation. Consciousness is not local. Consciousness is non-local, okay? Consciousness takes up no space. Consciousness cannot be weighed on a scale but it does exist okay consciousness is essentially the thinker behind quote unquote the body consciousness is what gives the body the ability to choose between various options and consciousness is what essentially makes the decisions all right when you go to sleep Consciousness is what wanders around in dreams. Consciousness is the dreamer. When your eyes are closed during sleep, consciousness is what allows you to interpret light in various colors and shades. Consciousness is what shifts realities. Consciousness is what interprets your three-dimensional reality, quote-unquote, when you're awake. And consciousness is also what interprets other three-dimensional realities when you are slightly detached from the body in altered states such as dream worlds that I've also talked about in 
previous installments. Consciousness, like I said, is what interprets other realities, okay, altered states such as when one is under the influence of hallucinogenic drugs such as ayahuasca, peyote, etc. All right. <clears throat> Consciousness exists outside of our virtual reality matrix, which is our universe and everything that exists within it. As do the players of chess reside outside of the pieces on the chessboard, you see, the chess players they move the pieces, utterly controlling the pieces, but they are not the pieces. In every single virtual reality simulation, you notice that the conscious player always exists outside of the game that is being played. Consciousness never resides inside the game itself being played. You see, consciousness resides outside of the game and an avatar is picked to act as a surrogate to accomplish certain objectives within the virtual reality matrix simulation. You see, consciousness that exists outside of this virtual reality has infinite potential. It has infinite potential. Your consciousness is technically infinite. It takes up no particular point in space, in which space is just an illusion anyway, and it has no mass, so it's not subjected to gravitational forces. Consciousness evolves by decreasing its own chaotic entropy through knowledge and wisdom. Gnosis, which leads consciousness on an everlasting quest to develop a higher quality of being. You see, now, your body, the avatar, while in this virtual reality matrix, the avatar is what limits consciousness. The avatar is what limits consciousness. Now, what is consciousness specifically governed by? What is consciousness specifically governed by? Consciousness is specifically governed by the brain and the limitations of the physical body that are encoded within the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, and from here on out, I'm just going to refer to the body as an avatar. Okay, your avatar represents individualized consciousness which exists, like I said, outside of the virtual reality matrix. But in order for individualized consciousness to evolve, it must have a virtual reality to experience. You see, in order to get feedback and learn more about self through direct interaction, communication, consciousness learns how to evolve from those devolving, you see, by way of direct observation, similar to how we experience cold weather by its comparison with warmer temperatures on a sliding scale. Virtual reality matrices that have strict rule sets, i.e., that have many natural and universal laws in motion, act as good teachers and guides because they tend to be really efficient at highlighting the duality in things, which is key to the evolution of consciousness, okay? Now, contrary to popular belief, thoughts are not stored in the brain. Thoughts are not stored in the brain. Consciousness does not reside within the brain. The brain, as well as all of your other organs, including your skin, is just virtual. It's just virtual. Everything in this virtual reality simulation that I commonly call the matrix is virtual. It's made up of data, cells, bits of information. Your brain does not filter in, and this is key. Your brain does not filter in. It filters out. Okay? Your brain is a governor. 
okay? It filters out color, which is light, sound, and all other vibrations that exist, which can be possible to distinguish, you see? The brain limits consciousness, similar to how a, a governor on a go-kart limits the RPMs and the speed that the engine runs at. You see, it's the same thing. But it, the brain does this according to standards that have been imposed on this virtual reality matrix. Consciousness is very limited in this virtual reality because it's designed to fast track consciousness. Okay. This is why so many individualized consciousnesses take up an avatar here. Many of the avatars that walk around day to day are either avatars with the rebellious consciousness guiding them from the great beyond, guiding the avatar from outside of our universe, from outside of this virtual reality, or many avatars that we that walk around from day to day are uh, a fallen or are guided by a fallen consciousness that's guiding them. Okay, you see, the majority of avatars are dead. Okay, meaning. They are being played by a consciousness who has no real intent on evolving. They're just like they just like the fleshly pursuits and entertainment of this virtual reality. Similar to how people play Grand Theft Auto just to go around stealing and killing people. You know what I'm saying? With no real motivation to complete or beat the game. You see? And these are the avatars you want to stay away from because their consciousness has been seared with a hot iron, okay? And this and the uh, this rebelliousness or this complacency or this uh, seemingly stagnant behavior behavior can be um, um, the consciousness behind these avatars that do these things quite possibly could be very old, so. The age of one's consciousness who is, see, here's the thing, is that you have, you can have a consciousness that is extremely old, but yet they have no real love for evolution. So they enter into these virtual realities or our virtual realities, specifically our universe, to just play around and joke around. With no real intent on evolving. But then again, you might have some younger souls that might be a little more um, persistent in wanting to evolve. Then again, you might have some older uh, consciousnesses that are extremely serious about evolving. That take it upon themselves to teach others how to evolve and teaching and while at the same time teaching those that are serious about evolving who to stay away from and who to gravitate towards. Okay. Now, age is a part of the rule set in this virtual reality simulation, which brings about decay. The decay is strictly confined to the avatar. Okay. The avatar has a shelf life. You only get so much time in this virtual reality until you start over. If that is an option for you, of course, consciousness is connected to this virtual reality by a silver cord, so to speak. And this connection is a multidimensional one, not just a three dimensional one. OK, the moment the physical avatar dies, which basically is when it ceases to interpret data, when it stops interpreting data, a black void is experienced. Consciousness then exists after that in a pure state of being. Okay? Possessing another notch in its evolutionary belt, if you will, and ready for another virtual reality experience of a different sort. Or maybe the consciousness might even return to the same virtual reality depending upon its attachments. 
Okay? When we look around and see, for example, the picture on the wall or the vase on the table, it seems like we are looking at them through space. But this is just an illusion. There is no such thing as space. Similar to your, your TV set, if you will. We live in a three-dimensional virtual reality that is simply just digital. There is no space. The only thing that is keeping, for example, let me just say this, right? Hypothetically speaking, the only thing that is keeping you in Oakland from reaching out and touching your sister in Miami is your physical avatar, which is also restraining your consciousness. You see? You get it? It's your consciousness that has limitations placed upon it by the avatar through codes of DNA. And consequently, we have uh, codes placed upon our avatar within this system by the police department, the judicial system, ETC. Okay, there are various virtual realities within virtual realities, okay, <clears throat> which many use as control. Now, when I say that, I should say this too, when I say that the body limits consciousness, I'm not saying that the body has dominion over consciousness, I'm just saying the body limits the ways in which consciousness can express itself in a three-dimensional reality. In this virtual reality matrix, every action has a consequence. And any action that is committed upon your avatar, be it good or bad, by your consciousness, which is outside of the virtual reality, the brain structures the DNA of the avatar to reflect the consequence. This is how consciousness receives feedback as to what to do and what not to do, okay? This is at the heart of your learning experience. Not the learning experience of the avatar, because it's just data. The learning experience of your consciousness. The consciousness is what uh, retains the information and, and what evolves, not the physical avatar. And there are many virtual realities, not just this one. And there are many levels to this virtual reality. Well, I call them levels, okay? Some people call them uh, ages or epochs. Since every level is within this virtual reality, every level or epoch also comes under the jurisdiction of time. This specific element of time that's specific to this virtual reality, okay? And <clears throat> so every virtual reality, every level comes under the jurisdiction of time and is limited by time. And each level lasts for a certain period of time. And then another level begins. Certain, similar to how when you're playing a video game, you know, many video games, you only have a certain amount of time to get the job done or pass the level. All right. And then you have to start it all over again. OK, mm -hmm. if you so choose. All right. Now, you can also. Create. Multiple dimensions within a three dimensional reality. You can create multiple smaller virtual realities within our larger, our larger virtual reality matrix as well. Now, in this, and see, here's the thing. This is what has been done by the Demiurge and these Archons, okay? They have created the biggest virtual reality matrix within a greater virtual reality. And the Demiurge's virtual reality opposes the greater virtual reality because it's a de facto virtual reality, it's been set up by by his decree, by his order. OK. And. The Demiurge of virtual reality opposes the greater virtual reality that was initially 
designed to fast track the evolution of consciousness. But the virtual reality that they've set up is designed to uh, benefit the lazy, the drunkards, the gluttons, the materialistic ones. That's why so many uh, uh, consciousness units take up avatars here because they like the demiurges virtual reality that they've structured inside of the greater virtual reality that was designed to uh, fast track the evolution of consciousness, but they've created a virtual reality inside of a greater one to really um, gain the attention of ones that have no true sense of evolving. Okay, and this is also important to note too is that just because um, their consci- just because consciousness exists outside of our universe does not mean that it's righteous. You have many many uh individualized consciousnesses that are have no true sense of um uh, doing doing the right thing evolving elevating in consciousness okay you have very um wicked and malevolent elements of consciousness okay and they like this virtual reality because they can they take advantage of it and oftentimes while taking advantage of um, the materialistic things and the quests they can achieve they tend to uh, try and take advantage of ones that are really trying to evolve okay and and, and ego and jealousy is a big part of that okay so just be cognizant of that but like everything else it's going to come to an end And you can bet on that. See, the Demiurge is not directly hurting consciousness. It's just in the Archon. It's just seeking to uh, hurt the evolution of certain consciousness awareness units for a time. But it's only temporary. Okay? And egomania is going to be the downfall of its virtual reality. If time doesn't end it first. So I don't want to go on too long. I just wanted to uh, put out an installment out there for all of my uh, true listeners. I know I haven't put out an installment in a while. But once again, my book uh, is in stores now. If it's not in stores, you can order it online uh, by way of Amazon.com. the title of the book is called Gnosis of a God, G-N-O-S-I-S of a God, G-O-D, by me, William, a.k.a. Brother Prodigy. Support it. Support the book. Support the movement. Gnosticism. Support a true Gnostic if you're inclined to do so. All right? If you're inclined to do so. But just remember... You, we're dealing where we're, we're in a virtual reality where you must be on guard. You must be on guard. OK. And a tree is known by its fruit. So once again, I would like to say shalom, peace to everyone out there.